Welcome to Widow Too Soon. This is Michelle Bader Ebersole. I'm sitting here. Don't make me sing it all by myself. Anyways, I don't know how many times I'm going to sing that when I do episodes by myself. So I am first going to just get you caught up. Wasn't that an awesome episode last week with Rob and Ellen? Loved it. Thank you guys so much for doing that. It was a beautiful, powerful story. I love hearing from you guys. In fact, I have tons of guests that I'm trying to get to. I know some of you are still waiting. Be patient. Um, I really am excited about having more guests. But today, God just put some stuff on my heart that I thought I would just come on here and do a little episode by myself, which I know is kind of boring, but (laughs) I just wanted to talk about it. So first, I'm going to catch you up and then... I am going to share what's on my heart, what God put on my heart today. So let's catch up. Let's see. Last time you heard from me, I had talked about, I went to Vegas, came back. Um, A bunch of stuff has happened since then. Okay. Here's a big one. So, um, oh my gosh, totally lost what I was going to say. I said, here's the big one. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. So. You know how Haley's cat got lost before, Milo? I don't know if you remember that, Um, but he went missing again, and this time for three nights. And you guys, this was a big deal to her because this is her cat. We never had a cat when Luke was alive because he was allergic. Last September, if you remember, Joel and I found a cat for her at a garage sale, and I woke her up and surprised her with it. Well, Milo went missing. She went like every day. We he had a tile app on him, and she'd go up and down the roads and try to you keep your tile app open. It's supposed to like find him within four hundred feet. Did this for three days. Ask our neighbors three times, three times on our neighborhood Facebook chat. Please just download the tile app. My daughter's been searching for hours. Three nights she didn't sleep. She was up till five a.m. every night. So the third night. 5 a.m., she she had made posters she was going to go put up, and all of a sudden, she hears meowing at her door, like her bedroom door, and he was home. Milo made it home, and Joel kept saying, cats come home, cats come home. We had put, we left the garage door open just a little bit. We put cat food there, and then the door from the garage into the house open, and he made it in, so that was a huge thing, and we immediately bought a new tracker. I think it's called Tile Tracker, Tracker, track, track Tile. Um, that all the neighborhood people had suggested. So if you have a cat, the tile app does not work that well. I highly recommend it. I am not endorsed. Just wanted to share that story. Thank you for those who prayed. Actually, I don't think you guys knew, but a lot of people prayed that he would come home. And you know what? God cares about everything. And we had just like really prayed the night before God, please let Milo come home. And like Haley was crying. Like it brings up grief. Like anything with loss brings up like a lot of grief for her as it does for a lot of us when we have loss. So I was so thankful. Like, I like Milo. He's sitting here next to me, but I don't like love, love him like Bentley. Um, And I wasn't devastated personally that he was gone, but I was really sad for her because she loves him so much. Anyways, I know. Big news. You've really been wondering about the cat. So that actually wasn't the big one. Um, I want to share a couple things before I get into the big thing, which led me to what I'm going to talk about today. Um, let's see. We had a widow's event. It was awesome. Um, Tammy, shout out to Tammy. I think you're listening. She opened her home to us and there were eight of us and it was beautiful. There were a couple new widows and we just, it's, you know, summer, it's beautiful. We sat outside and just everybody shared their stories. And then what was the one thing that helped them get through it? Like what was the biggest thing? And the theme was faith, family, and friends. And, um, you know, really like God's strength, really. It's gotten us all through. Beautiful. Everybody there was Christian and like just shared the same faith. And we, we prayed over people. It was beautiful. It was a wonderful time. I can't wait to do it again next month. A lot of people say, well, I want a widow's group in my area. Start one. Literally, that's what I did. So you just start putting the word out, um, maybe on Facebook or wherever, and then you start collecting widows and then soon you have a group shout out to Karen Kindle, one of my really good friends. She did this in Eastern Washington and she got a group started and now people send her widows all the time. So you can start one. If you don't have one, 
start one. There's nothing stopping you. There's nothing like special about what I did. I just did it and Karen too. So if we can do it, you can do it. It's a little encouragement. If you want to be part of a widow's group in your area, start them. Like you'll start finding widows. Like there's so many in your area. Once people know that you are doing a group, they start sending them your way. A lot of times people are not ready to go to their group, to a group, right? When they're brand new. So I send them a card, like all the women sign it, all the widows, then we send it to them and invite them to our group and they give them my phone number. And then when they're ready, they come. A lot of times they're not ready in the very beginning and that's okay. Okay. Social security. I'm going to talk about this because it probably affects a lot of you with the survivor benefits for your kids. So, you know, it's been four years since Luke passed away and we've been receiving survivor benefits since the beginning. So in the beginning, it was a certain amount divided by four. We, we each got uh, a fourth of it. And then, um, what happened next? Then I got married. And so it went down to the three of them and then Hayden aged out, went down to the two of them. And and every single time it would be the same amount. I just want you guys to know this in case you're going to come into a similar situation. I want you to be prepared. And then now, so it was the same amount all four years. I mean, there's a little increase over the years for like cost of living, et cetera. Well, Haley turned 18 in May and now it's just Peyton. And I assumed, cause he's 16, I assumed that I get the same survivor benefits that we've always gotten for Luke, but it went in half in half. And that's a lot when you're counting on the money. And so I was able to call them today and I wanted to make sure I got it clear. I said, I work with a lot of widows. I want to understand this. So when it gets down to the last survivor, and I know this doesn't apply to some of you, but some of you, it might. So I want you to know this. It can only be 75% of what your late spouse would be receiving if they received social security. And there's also like a max family benefit, but I didn't really get that part, but she just said last survivor, 75%. So that made it totally change and totally go down. So it's a lot less than we were receiving for the next two years. Um, But now I know, and I just wanted to inform you guys that if that, if you've got one about to age out, most likely that will happen so that you can be financially prepared because I wasn't. So that's a little side note I wanted to talk about. I'm still praying about direction for my book. I still only have five chapters written, but I'm going to She Speaks conference. I'm actually doing it online um, this coming week or in a couple of days. Actually, by the time you listen to it, I've already done it. And I'm very, very excited about that because I went to She Speaks. A, it's put on by Lisa to Kirsten. It is a conference for speakers, Christian speakers and writers. And actually, we probably wouldn't be sitting here today if I hadn't gone to that. It's when I got inspired to start my first podcast My first podcast, if you want to look it up, it's still out there. It's called The Peace Cast. And I interviewed people about hard stories they've been through. And then towards the end, it was just about like updates about Luke. So I could just put it out there and everybody could listen to it. So anyways, that's that's the roots. And then I went to Widow Goals. I have a podcast still out there called Widow Goals, if you want to look it up. And then started Widow Too Soon. So anyways, I'll be going to that. Keep praying if you want to. Praying for direction for the book. Widow goals, steps to finding peace when you lose your spouse. I know it's supposed to be out there. I have a clear feeling about that. I've been rejected by like two agents and three publishers. And so that's kind of hard, but I feel like I need to keep going. I had another publisher reach out to me yesterday, but he, you have to agree to purchase 2000 copies of your book. Like I know in the lifespan of my other books, I've never sold even a thousand. So I know I'm not going to do that. So I'm just praying about direction. I'm most likely going to self publish. So that's that. Um, we're still praying about scholarships for Haley. She goes to college in like five weeks, but we don't know if she really can (laughs) because we're waiting on the scholarship. I've told you guys about where it is for children who have lost a parent who did not have life insurance and it's a pretty big, um, they give out like 20 of them and it, they give out 10 to $15,000 renewable for four years. So if that came through, we just about have all of her college paid for. And then she was interviewed for another one a few weeks ago that we we're waiting on. So just pray, please, that these come through because this college she wants to go to is like her dream school to be able to pursue becoming a music teacher, be able to participate in theater and worship team and all the things she loves. And I just know she's going to make such great lifelong friends. That's a little bit about that. Um, I've been spending a lot of time out in lakes, like at least three times a week. In fact, Joel and I are going to go paddleboarding this afternoon. I'm so excited about it. 
Also, I am 100% homeschooling Peyton next year. So um, I found a, it's kind of like a co-op and I'm going to be teaching high school for three hours a week. You, the parents just have to commit to that. So I love elementary. So I'm not quite sure about high school, but um, I know I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be and it'll be fun to get to see Peyton with his peers and all of that. So that's a little update. So this is the biggest thing I want to talk to talk to you about that leads into the topic today. So Joel's cousin had four kids, three boys. I think they're like 10, eight and two. And then they had a beautiful little girl and she was like the princess of the family. Um, and she unexpectedly passed away at eight months old. This was, um, I think July 6th and absolutely heartbreaking. Like we went to the celebration of life last Saturday and it was beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time. What was beautiful was the way the parents, his cousins worshiped God throughout the whole thing. Like there was their baby. It was an open casket. There was their baby right there, but yet they were worshiping. <clears throat> they were lifting their hands in worship and worshiping Jesus in the worst imaginable thing. Like like the thought of losing a child and, and it was just, you walk in and it was like her baby dress is hanging up and all these pictures in her bassinet. And it was very sombering, you know, all the people walking in and, um, it was the hardest service I've ever been. I mean, well, no, Luke's was personally for me, but outside of him. And it was also very, um, grief triggering for me. For one, it was at the church that Luke and I used to go to. Number two, it was the pastor that was there, not the one that spoke, but he was there. He was the one, he was our pastor and he officiated Luke's service. And the third biggest grief trigger was um, seeing another, you know, body without a soul. And the last time I saw that was when Luke died. And so it was, Joel was like, are you okay? Can you do this? I'm like, I, I can do it. I can do it. But I was like, it was like I was brought back to the moment Luke died. Like it was, I don't know how to explain it. I was feeling the weight of that feeling brokenhearted for them, but also feeling the weight of what those moments felt like, like when he died and the services and like all of the stuff, it just like all came back to me. And I, I just was so heartbroken for this family. If you think about it, please pray for them. Please pray for their last names, Brito, pray for the Brito family. And just the little boys and, um, the 10 year old, I think he's 10. He, uh, he got up and spoke and he had a poem for his sister and it was so beautiful. But the most heartbreaking thing was obviously watching the parents and then watching the brothers just so heartbroken and, but yet praising God. It was, it was beautiful. Something that happened as kind of ended up being like a little bit funny, but you know, I'll, let me explain it this part's not funny, but then it gets to the funny part. So, um, I end up running into this girl I have not seen in years. Like before, like when the service is about to start, we gave each other a hug, said talk later. Then I see her afterwards and we start talking. Um, we were good friends like 20 years ago. Like we taught together, but, um, we just kind of lost touch over the years. And, I said something about this is triggering because this is the church Luke and I went to and she just nods looking a little confused. And then I said, you know, something about Joel's cousin. She's still looking a little confused. And I said, I got married last year. She's looking even more confused. And I said, you know, Luke died, right? And she started bawling and she's like, no, I didn't. She doesn't have social media and we haven't spoken years. Like, we were close years ago. We weren't close when he died. And so I, I just never reached out to her and I felt so bad because she starts bawling. So she's already like having a hard time about the baby. And then I'm telling her about Luke and I'm like, but, but I'm okay. And like, this is Joel. <laughs> like, it was just like, she had no clue. And so I kind of told her the story about how he died and all the things. And she's just crying and crying. And, um, then we ended up same thing. Her husband said something about Luke. I'm like, well, actually he died <laughs> and this is Joel. <laughs> and they ended up talking. And then this is the kind of funny part, like, cause we can joke about it. When Joel was saying goodbye to them, he was like, nice to meet you guys. Sorry to do the old husband switcheroo. And we just are laughing cause we can laugh about it. Like 
you know, when we are widowed, like it probably wouldn't be funny if someone else said it, but I was fine with him saying it. But um, anyways, that was the kind of funny part, but I was able to catch up with her and just, she got to meet Joel and all of that stuff. But that was a very emotional, like I was the rest of the day, I was a wreck. Like I just was so emotional and I have people that I love who have cancer and just so many things going on that I keep asking God, why? Why do I have a good friend that's widowed who's going through cancer? Why did the baby die? Why this? Why that? And what I keep hearing over and over, like so strong, I had to do an episode about it. I keep hearing this, these words. And then I looked it up and it's a Bible verse. <laughs> I keep hearing this world is not our home. And that's the title of this episode. This world is not our home. And I looked it up and I, I mean, I thought it was a verse, but let me read it to you because it's actually from the Bible. Hebrews 13, 14 through 16. For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our everlasting home in heaven. With Jesus' help, we will continually offer our sacrifice of praise to God by telling others of the glory of his name. Don't forget to do good and to share what you have with those in need for such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. And that is the living Bible translation. So what I was hearing in my head, isn't it cool how God talks to us sometimes? What I was hearing in my head is actually a verse. And I just felt like I just wanted to speak about this a little bit. It's the same thing, um, especially Mark has talked about before, is having an eternal perspective. And he's helped me to have that eternal perspective in all the times he's talked about it. And it's that same thing, like, this world is not our home. And that's why some of these things happen, because this is not where we're going to end up, right? We're just stopping through. This is just like a small part of the bigger picture that we can't understand. I know we've talked about this before, but it's like the illustration of like, there's like a tiny ruler and like a centimeter out of all this big, long thing, like forever that we can't even imagine. Like that's this life. This world is not our home. We are actually like, I think there's verses about this, like living here, but it's not our own. Like we're just passing through. I know that sounds kind of like Christian cl cliche, but it's true. Like we are just passing through and that's why we should not. <clears throat> I was listening to a Christine Kane, love her, just bought her book too, um, one of her podcasts. And she's like, we shouldn't, I think this is where it's from. We shouldn't be surprised when we have troubles because this, this world's not our own. We shouldn't be surprised when we have trials because also remember this, when there's confrontation, when there's dysfunction, when there's all these things, it's most likely a spiritual attack. Like our, oh, what's that verse? So our struggles, not against flesh and blood, but against the, you know, the demons. I'm not quoting it right, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's a verse that you guys are probably quoting it. Like, come on, don't you know it? I just don't have, have it totally memorized, but it's, it's against the enemy. That's really what it's against. It is not when you have conflict with someone, it's not even about that, right? It's about this spiritual world and we shouldn't be surprised when we have troubles. But yet sometimes we are. I mean, I am like all the time. And whenever there's something else new going on, it's hard. Um, I had my own stuff going on with... Um, Hayden, my oldest, having some health issues, and um, he's been having a cough since last November, and we still don't know what the answers are to that, which is scary and triggering because every time, every time Luke coughed, it reminded me of his cancer in his lungs. And so to hear Hayden coughing all the time has been hard. And the first doctor he went to, so dumb. Like, come on, doctors, let's get some, like, clues. Yeah, it's his first time. He's under his own insurance now. He's dealing with all of his self, and he goes to the doctor, and she said, you know, I said, you need to ask for an x-ray. They got an x-ray of his lungs. Before the radiologist looked at it, she's like, hmm, there may be some things on it, maybe tumors, okay? Not knowing his history, not knowing anything, 
like, you don't say that. And he came home and told me that. And it was so difficult in the waiting period. Let me skip to the good news. There was no tumors. <laughs> the radiologist looked at it. Clear. Good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but in the meantime, it was very like, what in the world? Like, you think because you're widowed, you won't have these other bad things happen to you. But it's not true. It's not true. Like, Jesus didn't promise that our life would be easy, but he promised to be there with us. And we're going to go through hard things. Um, and to follow up on Hayden, he went to a pulmonologist. We're still not sure what's going on. So we can keep praying for him, but very scary to have these additional things happen um, when you've already had major things happen. But, you know, just keep keep praying for him, please. And um, anyways, it's just like... I don't know. I remember at this celebration of life for the little baby, baby Ivana, that I just, I don't know how to explain it. I was just imagining heaven and I was imagining like all the people I know, all of your spouses, like there's so many people now in heaven and what that's like and how this is just a little blip. Like this is not it, you know? And sometimes we forget in our day-to-day, -day, busy rushing, goals, jobs, work, kids, all the things, we forget that this is not our home. And like, it doesn't really matter. You know, none of it matters but eternity. And that really should be our goal is to shine a light for Jesus and attract more people to eternity with him and take a look at our lives and think, am I doing that? Like, am I daily pointing people to Jesus with my actions, with my words. I'm not saying <clears throat> you need to go on the corner and hand out tracks or shout on the boxes. In fact, a lot of that turns people off. I'm saying like your lifestyle, how you live, how you, who you are, is it attracting people to Jesus? And I understand if you're a new widow, sometimes it's hard to even think about anything but getting out of bed, but you surviving you thriving like that's showing people the power of Jesus the power of healing I know people could look at my life and look at who when he died and where I was compared to now and it's evidence of Jesus power it's evidence of his healing power and if you're not in that place he can bring you to that place like never give up I also had um the privilege of meeting with a young girl she reminded myself of myself <laughs> She's 29, which, by the way, is how old I am. But anyway, she's younger, a little bit. <laughs> and um, her husband is going through cancer. And she's just in this place of, like, what's going on? Like, is he going to live? All of that stuff. And one of the things that I told her is never give up hope. Never give up hope. You can stay balanced by knowing what could happen in the future, but never give up hope. Pray till the end for a miracle. We prayed every single day, God, please heal Luke. We pray that it's on earth, but we understand that it might be in heaven and never give up hope. So wherever you are in your widow journey, I want to encourage you to never give up hope because hope is like, it's like the, it's like the thing that keeps the lights on, right? If we don't have hope, what do we have? Like, imagine living in a hopeless world. And I feel like I felt that for just a little bit after Luke died. I was like, what's the point of anything? Like, what's the point? And, you know, like Satan will try to get us into this. I experienced this spiral recently. And then I was talking to a friend. She experienced the same spiral recently of like, getting us into a place where we feel rejection, where we feel like nobody cares about us, where we feel like we don't matter so that we are not going out and doing what God wants us to do. And don't let him get you to that. Well, you might get to that place, but don't stay in the place. So I know you guys have heard this, but I'm going to refresh your memory. This is from my counselor. Shout out to Kathleen. We have what are called ants in our brain, automatic negative thoughts. You have one negative thought and then your brain goes searching to find something else to um, support that. It's like a snowball and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. For example, like if you're like, nobody likes me, then you're going to go to an example in your life where, yeah, this person doesn't like me. And then you're going to find another one until it's snowballed. So what you have to have is an anteater. An anteater is something that you say 
when that ant comes at you, like, you know, nobody loves me. No, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My parents love me. My kids love me. Like whatever you're going to say to stop that snowball. Because if we become snowballed with these ants, we become not as powerful as God wants us to be, right? It's like, you know, throw off everything that hinders and tangles and all the stuff that we want to be like free. Like it is for freedom that Christ set us free. So it's crazy that so many of us stay trapped in this trap of like thinking we're not free when actually we're free. We're free. We don't have to hold on to all of this pain and all of the things. Anyways, I'm all over the place. Like this is going to be a short little one. It's just me talking. But I really just want you to encourage you to like really meditate on Hebrews 13, 14. Let me just read that part of the verse again. For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our everlasting home in heaven. And I just want you, as you go about your day today, to remember that this world is not our home and it feels overwhelming and sad and just all kinds of craziness sometimes. And you're like, God, where are you? <clears throat> where are you? He's always there. But he doesn't always save us from all the pain and like, you know, it's hard to understand. I was talking to this young girl about it. Like, how does God decide who to heal and who to not heal? And like, we can't understand it, you know? And I was telling her, you know, to help her daughter, which is young, maybe a little too young for this yet, but to talk about, you know, it's like the world is a puzzle and we see one little puzzle piece. God sees the whole thing, you know? And so we can't understand why these things happen but to trust God because he's the one putting the puzzle together. Like he promises, um, what's the verse? <laughs> I should know verses better. Um, but about, um, I just read it this morning about good for those that love him. He, you know, good for those who love him. I think it's Romans eight twenty eight. Um, anyways, like he really wants the best for us. And so it's hard sometimes. And I've had people in many situations recently say to me, like, what did I do? Like, like they think that the things happening in their life are because of them. And it's not like, we don't own that much power. Like, you, you know, the things that are happening are not because you did something wrong, right? They're not because you did something wrong at all. It's because we're in a fallen sinful, sinful world and this world is not our home. I want you to say that again. Say it out loud with me. This world is not our home. Like that's been echoing in my mind for like two weeks. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm supposed to share this. And then I was excited to see that really is a verse. <laughs> um, that's what's so cool about um, God's word. You can read it or memorize it or whatever, and it will come back to you. Like if you're not reading the Bible, I highly recommend it because that's how God speaks to us. You know, he'll bring the cool thing is like for teaching our kids verses. He's going to bring them back to them later. Like I grew up in a Christian school, all the things. So I have a lot of verses I memorized over time and, um, they come back to me like, like that one. That's how God speaks to us. And so I want to encourage you to just remember this world is not our home. So whatever troubles you're facing today, just know that number one, it's not forever. And number two, this world is not our home, but we want to make sure that we are not only living life, but living life abundantly. That's from John something. I got to get better about verses and references and all this stuff. But the cool thing is I know what God's saying, even if I don't know like literally every word and then I can look it up. But, um, that's one of my favorite things to talk about is we were made to live life and live life abundantly. We were not just, okay, our husbands died or wives died, and now we're just supposed to just barely survive. No, God still has a plan for you. If you are listening to this right now, check. Do you have a pulse? Check your Fitbit. Check your Apple Watch. I don't think Google has. Oh, they do. Rob, what is it? I don't know. Check something. But anyways, um, oh, actually, I actually think Google is kind of a... Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not getting into that. <laughs> do you have a pulse? If you do, God has a plan for you. If you have a pulse, God has a plan for you. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't understand the own, my, God's own plan for my life. Like, <laughs> But I know that God has a purpose for you. And I know that he is going to do what needs to be done in your life and 
you know, we're going to bring glory to him. And yeah, for some reason, we have this life where we had to have a spouse die. It's not fun, right? But it's our story. And so why not let God make beauty from the ashes and dancing from the morning and all of the things? Let, why not let him do that? And why not let him use your story? I encourage you to reach out and share your story to someone about how God has faithfully brought you through this, or you're still in the midst of it, you know, reach out to an, if you're a seasoned widow, reach out to a new widow and encourage them. Like that's the goal of the nonprofit widow goals, widows, helping widows, not only survive, but thrive. Like let's help each other. If you haven't joined the widow too soon community page, please do that below. A lot of people have joined in the last week. And let's make that a place where we can encourage each other. We can pray for each other and let's lock arms and do this together. So I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer and uh, then I'll let you go. God, we just thank you so much for each and every listener today. This is not an accident. I just pray that you continue to put it into our hearts that this world is not our own. And while we're here, please show us what to do every day. Show us where you want us to go. Lead us to what our lives are supposed to be, God. And we pray for continued healing for Mark and for Tina. And we just thank you um, for all that you have done, all the healing you've already done. I pray for each listener that needs healing in their heart and their mind and the spirit that you would continue to do that. Would you bring the resources to them? Would you bring the friends to them, the family to them? God, I just, I just feel like I just want to pray peace over every single one of them, peace that passes all understanding. I thank you for the privilege of being able to speak to so many widows And I just pray that you'll just shine on them today. Amen. If you like this podcast, (laughs) give it a little bing, five stars, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. Uh, Next week, we'll probably have a guest. I've got several in the works that I'm really excited about. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. Have a wonderful day. Make sure you join us on Widow Too Soon Community on Facebook. Link is below. Um, Reach out, fill out the form if you want to be a guest, and we will talk to you later. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.